Let me start by openly declaring the intention of my speech. I want you to think differently about food. Because I'm convinced it's currently one of the most powerful levers we have to address key challenges of our time. I want you to adopt a different perspective, an enlightenment similar to when Sir Isaac Newton discovered the laws of gravity, which appeared to him as he sat under a tree and an apple fell on his head. So I brought an apple with me from my own garden. Don't worry, I won't throw the apple at you. I love apples, so I'd rather try to seduce you with this apple. I want you to tell you a bit about my own relationship about the apple. Because I grew up in a small village where my father used to have an apple orchard, and I helped him look after the trees. I helped him pruning them, harvesting the fruits, processing them into juice, or selling them to our neighbors. Only when I grew up, I realized that apple orchards are sprayed about 20 times a year with various pesticides. Many of them are known to be harmful to people and to the environment. In order to boost the growth of the trees, a lot of fertilizers are used, which at the same time make the apples more susceptible to pests and diseases, so that again more pesticides have to be used. And to make things worse, um, beneficial insects which could control the pests are, are diminished by this chemical load. You may think, hey, come on, what's new about this? I know that agrochemicals are bad. What I want you to illustrate here is that once we dig deeper into a simple food item like an apple, a whole system of complex interactions and interdependencies unfolds. And what is true for the apple applies also to other food items. And when we look at the entire food system from farm to fork, we realize that what we eat and how we produce our food shapes the face of the planet and of our societies like no other human activity. This becomes particularly evident if you adopt the bird's perspective. The next time you fly, if you still do, interrupt the board entertainment system for a moment and take a closer look beyond the, uh, below you on the landscapes there. It's fascinating. You can see how much land is dedicated to agriculture and how much is left to nature, or how little. In the agricultural land, you can distinguish large-scale monocultures or highly diverse systems. And it's not difficult to imagine that different land use patterns differently affect people, but also the rural communities who live there. The current ways which we are using our agricultural land have a very strong impact on soils. About 52% of our arable soils are already degraded. Every five minutes we are losing the equivalent of a football field to soil erosion. Intensive agriculture is also one of the most determining factors for the loss of biodiversity. About 70% of biodiversity loss of land are allocated to agriculture. And studies show that in the last 30 years, um, we have already lost about three-quarters of our insect populations and 13% of the eat insect-eating bird populations. All these environmental impacts don't make really sense if you see that the food system fulfills its purpose of producing healthy food rather poorly. I mean, one in three people, they either suffer from hunger or they don't have access to adequate food. For about three billion people, they are consuming an imbalanced diet which is not good for their health, or they are simply eating too much. Not to forget that the food system, these activities, provide a source of livelihood for billions of people who produce, process, prepare or sell the food. So it's an enormously important sector. I could go on and talk about deforestation, um, water depletion, pollution, cruelty to farm animals, all related to the food system. I deeply care about these issues, and I'm sure many of you do care as well. 
the good news is we can change this. Because food has such an enormous impact on people and planet, setting the food system right can really go a long way. We can achieve so much. We have the opportunity to produce enough healthy food in a way that preserves the environment and allows people to earn a decent living all in one go, if you get it right. We even have the possibility to address one of the most pressing challenges of our time, climate change. One third of the greenhouse gas emissions stem from the food system. And by now, we know that simply replacing fossil fuels with renewable energies won't be sufficient to achieve net zero emissions. We need technologies that absorb and remove carbon from the atmosphere. Such a technology already exists, proven since billions of years, and it's called photosynthesis. Countless examples show that we can design farming systems in a way that part of the carbon fixed by the plants is stored where it belongs, in the soil, as humus. And soils which are rich in humus, they are also better able to absorb water in times of strong rainfall or to keep and retain the moisture in times of drought, both obviously very vital functions in the face of climate change. So, what keeps us from fixing our food system, from getting it right? We all know you should buy organic food, local, seasonal, fair, not to waste too much food. It's good to consume a balanced diet, mainly plant-based. Luckily, what's good for your own health is also good for the planetary health. But we also know that knowing all this is not enough. Let me get back to the apple to the biblical fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. No need to turn food into a religion, no need to be dogmatic about it. Of course, you can turn vegan, but you don't have to. However, it's definitely a good idea to occasionally revisit your food habits and take your own steps towards a sustainable food system that is better for your own health and the planet's health. Because we are the market. We determine what's produced and how. Let me illustrate that with the apple. Proven organic management practices and robust, tasty varieties like the one in my hand, they do exist. Isn't it appealing? It's no chemicals used, and I harvested it about six months ago. But because people are used to certain varieties, and most of them happen to be highly susceptible to pests and diseases, retailers keep offering these varieties in the shelves, and farmers keep producing them. And because we consumers refuse certain uh, apples of a small size or with a, with a small spot, farmers keep using a lot of agrochemicals. We are all part of this system, and we can only change it together. From a macroeconomic perspective, if you look at the food system, we realize that seemingly cheap food is enormously expensive. Scientists have calculated that the global food sector causes $20 trillion in hidden environmental, health and poverty-related costs, which is about twice as much as the entire sector generates. Governments are using $540 billion every year for subsidies for mostly unsustainable systems. Using public money in a way that harms public good, it doesn't seem rational, does it? Instead of subsidizing unsustainable farming systems, shouldn't we tax them and use that money to subsidize sustainable systems so that they can unfold their true competitive value and become the new normal. I mean, in the end, we are paying for cheap food four times. First, at the cash counter. Second, when we pay taxes, which are used to pay subsidies or to undo part of the damage caused. Third, with our health bills for food-related health issues. 
And finally, as we pass on a heavy bill to future generations. You may think, wait a moment, can we really feed the world with ecological farming? Isn't it that a growing population needs more food, higher yields, and therefore more agrochemicals and biotechnology to produce them? Well, if overall food scarcity was the problem, would we use 40% of our precious arable lands to produce feed for animals? And I'm not talking about pastures, the cropland. Would we waste one-third of the food produced? However, yes, yields do matter, particularly in contexts like Sub-Sahara Africa, where many farmers struggle to get sufficient harvests. And my organization, BioVision, is working in these contexts since more than 20 years, helping farmers and researchers to develop clever, productive ecological systems. And it works. I want to show you one of these systems because I really think it's fascinating. The push-pull technology in maize. Cover crops grown between the raised maize rows, they have a smell which deters the insect pests so that they are pushed outside. And at the same time, they are attracted by the scent of a grass crop, of a fodder grass, where they can't propagate. The cover crop also is suppressing weeds and it's fixing nitrogen from the air and makes it available as a free of cost natural fertilizers to the maize plants. Tens of thousands of smallholder farmers in sub Sahara Africa have adopted this system successfully, realizing higher yields but also higher profits and a better nutrition than their conventional peers. And many such systems exist. I'm convinced that as a society, we can transform food systems. We can nourish a growing population. We have the technology, we have the tools. We will not be able to feed the world with approaches which are undermining the very basis of food production, which are healthy soil, clean water, biodiversity and healthy people. So we do have the possibility to change our food systems. What is needed is to change the rules of the game. What is needed is behavior change and changing the, the political economy, if you wish. Because in the end, much is at stake if we don't act, as we have just seen. But if we do act, we have the possibility as a society to address many challenges and development objectives in one go. Addressing climate change, fighting poverty, improving public health, and preserving the environment. All we need to do is to give food the attention it deserves. Because food matters. The next time you eat an apple, or something else. Maybe you think about how many issues are linked to food. But despite all these thinking, don't forget to enjoy food. <laughs>